Hello, welcome to a new tutorial of numerical computing in Python. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a Python program of Newton Raphson method to find the roots of a nonlinear equation. I will start with a simple code, then I will show you how to improve the code by using Python functions and lists. The main idea of Newton Raphson method is that the root is approached by a constructing consecutive tangents to the curve of the given function. As you see here, we have this function and we need to know its root at the intersection with its curve with x axis. The first step is to make a guess for the start value of x. Then we construct a tangent to the curve at x. The tangent will intersect with x axis at a new position. Let's call it x star. For the next iteration, x will take the place of x star. We construct another tangent to the curve at x. This tangent will give us a new value of x star again, and so on until x star reaches the root. It is obvious here how x star gets much closer to the root each iteration. This shows that newton raphson method has high rate of convergence and that's why it is one of the most common iterative numerical methods. Now let's see how to get the function of newton raphson method. So we notice here that the slope of the tangent is equal to the first derivative of the function at x. In this way, with rearrangement of this equation, we can simply get the new value of x, which we call it here x star, in the formula which is known as neutral raphson formula. One of two conditions of convergence can be applied in neutral raphson method and some other iterative methods as well. The first condition is the values of x obtained from two consecutive iterations should be very close or approximately equal. So we can write it in subtraction form. As you see in the graph, x could be to the right side of the root or it could be to the left. That's according to the initial guess and the shape of the curve. The x difference could be that's therefore positive or negative. So, to avoid sign errors, we use the absolute value. Now, in the computer code, the proximity or closeness to zero is determined by using a constant called tolerance. The tolerance can be defined as the maximum acceptable error to get the required accuracy. For example, here we see that the accuracy is defined as three decimal digits. That means that the difference between x star and x should be always less than 0 0.001 in order to get the uh, acceptable root. The second condition, when the corresponding value of the function at x or x star should approximately equal zero. This condition could result in an output of the root which may not be at the expected accuracy because it does not compare the values of x directly. Yet, this condition is applied in other iterative methods very efficiently. Now, let's look at the steps of the solution by using neutral raphson method. Step 1. We should find the first derivative of the function and define the neutral raphson equation. Second, we guess an initial value of x for the first iteration. Step 3. We substitute x in neutral raphson equation and calculate a new value of x. Now, if the absolute value of x difference is less than the tolerance, stop iterations and output the root. If the number of iterations reaches an assumed maximum value, stop. This condition is very important because if the root is not found, the program will run continuously without a stop or until an overflow error is displayed. In this tutorial, I will assume the maximum number of iterations is 100. Finally, if 
the previous two conditions are not satisfied, let x equal x star and repeat the steps from 3 until a condition in 4 or 5 is satisfied. Now, let's solve this equation. We have, in this example, a cubic equation, which is 2x cubed minus 9.5x plus 7.5 equals to 0. Now, the first step of the solution, we write this function in the, or this equation in the function form, then we find the first derivative. Then we formulate the new Tarafson equation. Now we can go to the interpreter of Python and start writing the code on our editor. Now let's start coding now by entering the first guess value of x and say x equals to let's say 5. Then we uh, start a loop in order to repeat the procedure according to the number of iterations. So and for this purpose we use for loop let's say for i in range 100 so in this way this the steps inside the loop will be repeated what for 100 times now uh, let's write the code or the equation of a new Tarapson and let's call the new variables as x new because the asterisk is not accepted as a variable name. The star is not accepted in the variable name because it's a uh, multiplication operator in uh, Python. So we use uh, le letters. So in this way, we define the equation of new Tarafson. Now we apply the convergence condition. So we say if the absolute value absolute value is defined by default in Fortran you don't need to include any or uh, import any uh, module for the absolute value so we can take x new minus x is less than let's say 0 0.001 as a tolerance now if this condition is satisfied we get out of the loop of iterations by the command break. Now the condition of iterations number is not required here because we uh, instead of using conditions we used it uh, directly in the loop so we can go to st step 6 and say x equals to x in u. Let's print uh, the root is and we write the specifier of um, real numbers which is the percentage sign and f in order to output the value of uh, the root and we say at um, and the number of iterations so it's a, like a small report now x new and i so in this way, we will try to run the code and see if uh, we can get the root by using this simple uh, program. This is the basic program of Newton Raphson to solve this cubic equation. So let's save and try the run. There is a mistake. Oh, yeah. Here we added a multiplication sign here. So again, okay. So we've got the solution. Um, this is the first root in seven iterations. Now let's try to find another root. So instead of five, let's say uh, 20. So we notice here that we've got uh, the result 1.500001. So uh, the additional one here is due to the tolerance we set because we emphasize that the degree of accuracy is three digits after the decimal point. So we have two solutions here. Number one, we can 
reduce the uh, output statement to three digits only by using point three here. So here the point three actually will limit the output of the decimal points or decimal digits in the in the output or print statement or print function up to three. So let's try it again. Control save. The second solution actually is to reduce the tolerance instead of 0 0.001 we can make it 0 0.000 up to six uh, decimal digits so in this way we can run again and we will get the uh, number is accurate up to six decimal uh, digits so in this way we can get the results we need but we couldn't get so far the route we uh, looking for so let's try instead of 20 zero this time okay so we obtained now the second root uh, of the cubic equation uh, let's try now negative values let's say minus 10 and here we are we have we have got the third root the first modification is to use Python functions because the main goal of this modification is to make the program reusable. So let's change the program to a function and let's say uh, define and we call it nRafson. This is, you can select any name you like and let's define the parameters or the arguments. So we have function, we have the derivative function, we have x, and let's also define the tolerance and the uh, number of iterations and say maximum iterations. So this way we define the function. Again, because Python depends on indentation mainly in order to show the blocks of uh, statements if they are related to functions or loops or or conditions so we can indent or that means we add space or the tabs in front before each uh, line in order to make them inside the structure of the function now let's try to make some changes here but before that let's define the function let's say let's call y let's call it y lambda the variable x and let's copy or move this function here and let's move the second function to let's call it dy lambda function variable x and let's take Okay, so in this way we defined the function. Now the function will be fn of x. So we will apply x here as we did in the uh, explicit format before. Now we are using the functions. So this is d function. So in this way we defined the functions as parameters in order to be passed through the arguments to uh, the body of the function of Newton Raphson. Now, let's define the number of iterations here. So we say max iter, and also we define the tolerance here by saying tolerance. Let's try these modifications by calling the Raphson. Uh, the function is y, the derivative is dy, the value of x, let's say 5, as we assumed at the very beginning, the tolerance is 0 0.00, let's say 1, okay, and 100. And again, as you see, we obtain the same results and the function is working well now. But there's a problem here. Generally, we don't use such functions in order to print the values instead we use them to return the values or the required values to the uh, main program or the main script so we should take out this print statement from here 
and make it in the body of the function and instead let's use the return statement this is the best and say x and u and i so and here we can use maybe other like x and n so instead we say x Let's try. We can define a default value for the tolerance. So we don't have to uh, give the tolerance every time we call the function. Uh, sometimes you can accept that, okay, we can say the tolerance of 0 0.0001 is acceptable uh, for general use in your uh, computational work. Again, we can say maybe 100 or 1,000, okay, 1,000 iterations are acceptable for your uh, work. So these are called default arguments. That means we don't have to define them every time. So let's try to code, let's uh, the, the run the code and see. So now we can combine these two functions into one list of functions. So instead of this structure, let's do something simple. Let's define a list of functions. Okay, now we made a list of two functions. And here, instead of passing one, instead of two, we can pass only one function. So it would be like this. The zero, the first one, the first element in the list, which is the function itself, or the given function. And the second element is its derivative. And we can take off the dy. So imagine we are now sending only two parameters, the list of functions and the initial value. Let's try and run the code and it's running very well. So in this way we could create a new term of some function which seems to be more professional than the basic uh, code or script we started with. Thank you.